was uh, one of the few races that ran the yellow Corvette GTP, and another one was uh, Aaron drove it at Nelson's Ledges and broke the Corvette race prepared track record up there with it. What's that? A Corvette race prepared record? Like uh, it's the fastest. I mean, they keep track of records for each class. And wow. the race prepared Corvette class had been held for a long, long time. And Aaron broke that with the yellow car. Wow. Wow. By do you do you happen to know by how much? It was only by probably a couple of tenths of a second. Still though, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. You built that car. Yeah. So but there was another race. You know, everybody thought that these GTPs were so big that they wouldn't do well in like an autocross. Well, we went to an autocross up in Cleveland and it was pretty tight. Matter of fact, the guy that was leading all day with the fastest time was a turbocharged Mini Cooper, <laughs> which was, you know, about the size of a washing machine. Right. Well, Aaron, on his last run, put it all together, and that big Corvette GTP, he got it through all those pylons faster than that uh, wow. Mini Cooper, and it took the fastest time of the day. Wow. That's impressive. It was like throwing a football through the needle of a the eye of a needle. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs>
Most intercoolers on a streetcar fit in the grill opening. Okay, so this is where you would place one for a mid-engine car then. Yeah, this is where the original car had it. Okay. actually go over top of this. And it fits. <laughs> Good. So that's part of the body. Yeah. The air will go in here. exit out of the side of the rear quarter. Okay. Up here it'll be a oil cooler, which will draw air through the top part of the door. That'll cool the oil. And that'll prevent the engine from overheating? Or no? Well it'll make it run cooler. Okay. Nice. Same thing on the other side. With the radiator? Is that what you were saying was going over there? Yeah. So the radiator is going on the other side? Yeah. Are we doing that today too? Yes. All right. All right, so what are we doing now? Uh, bolting the housing on for the air conditioning condenser and the radiator. The air conditioning condenser. So does that mean that this is going to have AC? Yes, it is. Did the original one have AC? No, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, well, these hot Ohio summers, we need AC, don't we? Yes, we do. The original one wasn't driven on the street either. Right. So if the original one didn't have AC, uh, how do you know how to put that in there? Uh, there was room for it here. <laughs> <laughs> so you built extra room for it? No, uh, it just worked out that way. Huh. The original car most likely The driver had what's called a cool suit. Okay. Pumped cold air, pumped cold water through his suit to keep him cool. Yeah, because this engine would get pretty hot, right? Yeah. And with it sitting right behind you, would it, yeah, would the engine heat come off? And no, actually, having the engine and everything behind you is good because. If it was in front of you, then you'd have hot air blowing through the firewall. Okay. But it's still got plenty of hot inside. Right. Oh, it won't? No. So it basically needs air conditioning just to keep 
the air flowing. Right. Okay, so this one won't have windows then. It'll have a window that the portion of it will slide forward. Like the GTP, the Corvette GTP one? Yeah. Okay. So how much time did you put into researching this car before you decided to build this one? Like you, you got the molds and you just said, okay, let's do it. Or like, yeah. was there a process that you had to do or? There's been a lot of thinking as it's gone along. A lot of mistakes made. Like what? Like when I first started out, I was just trying to make it a couple of times. I knew after I bought the mold that I was going to build one. Right. I was just trying to figure out the best way to do it. Okay, there's the housing for the radiator and the air conditioning condenser. Alright, so the radiator goes on top of it? Yeah. What kind of radiator is it? Uh, modified Griffin. Modified Griffith? Okay. That's where the radiator will go. What's that? This is a fiberglass plate that I made up. Hold the cooling fan in place. Okay, so. Okay. I'm just setting that there for now because I have to get the fans and install them. Okay. So you made that? Yeah. All right, what did I just have a part in installing? Uh, setting the roll cage in place. See, I helped build this car. <laughs> so this is the roll cage. Yeah. So now we're going to install that. Well, I already did. So this protects you. If the car was to roll over. Uh, this car can't roll over though, can it? Because it's too wide. <laughs> no. I mean, this thing is like, I don't see this thing rolling. Have you ever seen one of these roll? They make them put roll cages in them for some reason. <laughs> Extra protection. So what's that made out of? Uh, chrome molly steel. Okay. So I saw a video of a uh, Corvette. I, it had to have been an early 60s model Corvette that it was racing and it lifted up in the air. This thing wouldn't be able to do that, would it? Like the car went flying. I don't believe so. This car actually produces a lot of downforce. Okay. Which means there's air at speed pushing the body 
the car down onto the track. Okay. So then in theory, this car would not be able to do that then, which is a good thing. Yeah. So would that make the car faster? Yes. By the, the airflow? Of course, you're able to, to go around corners faster. Okay. It also creates drag, which takes some horsepower away, but it's a compromise. Okay. What's that? It's the body part for this side of the car that goes around the house. And it fits. It fits. Yeah, that looks good. So right there, the 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 metal thing right there, is that where the door is going to be? Is that where well, you step to get in? A step plate to get in and out of the car, but it also lifts up, and the air conditioning unit will be underneath of it. Oh, okay. On the driver's side, all the electronics will be. Oh, okay. That. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know that. Lift that up for me. There's some electronics in here right now. Probably a lot of dust too. Okay. Huh. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty awesome. And again, this will also be a step plate for getting in and out of the car. How high is this going to be off the ground? Is it going to be pretty low or is it going to be... From the ground to the top of the roof, about 40 and a half inches. Okay. So it'll be eight inches lower than it is right now. Okay. Speaking of the GTP, the yellow one, that was in the one lap of America too, wasn't it? Anything interesting happen with that car in the one lap? Well, Danny Pop and a friend of his, uh, I can't think of his name right now, they, they drove the car in the one lap in 07. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, we just finished the car about a week before the one lap. So it had some problems that we had to work out. Uh, second track we went to was Road America. And at high speed cornering, the car was pretty much all over the place. We went with Danny Pop and his co-driver, his name is Jeremy, to a garage nearby the track and figured out what the problem was and fixed it. And Danny said that uh, he had no experience with the car and he didn't want to go on with the race unless I was going to be there. So because I, I was with uh, a guy named Steve, worked for Mongoose Motorsports, and we decided to follow him. Okay. Uh, Are you allowed to do that in the One Lap of America? No, not really. <laughs> uh, we were pretty excited about the car, and I, I wanted to see it you know, run. The car was really fast at some 
thumb tracks, and we had actually teething problems at some of the other ones. But the car did pretty well. They played seventh overall out of about 100 cars. Okay, that was my next question. How many cars in it? Yeah. Uh, but there was one part where we were following them. We were out in, I think it was Oklahoma or one of those states out there. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. And we were texting back and forth. And they told us uh, they were near mile marker 165 or something like that. And I said, well, that's where we are. All of a sudden, two Corvettes came flying <laughs> behind us. Had to be going in excess of 160. <laughs> and at the time, we had a little trailer on the back of the GTP Corvette that we had their clothes, tools, everything, and they, they went by us like we were sitting still, and this <laughs> little trailer was just bouncing all over the place. <laughs> I'm surprised, that, you know, it didn't come off, but uh, yeah. it, it was a sight. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh. So, are you going to bolt those in today, right there? No, uh, I'll be putting the dashboard in first, and then it'll bolt through the dash into here. Okay, okay. So what do we have to look forward to in the next video? A lot of plumbing, electrical work, pedal assemblies, uh, maybe start fitting some of the body parts. Okay. Well, that's exciting. So it's starting to come along, and it's starting to look like a car. I mean, it's... A well, no, it hasn't always looked like a car. This thing is pretty big, so. But yeah, it's starting to come together. This brace, I don't know if we talked about it. it basically, it's what the front uh, front Which, clip hinges on. Which one? The black thing in the front? Yeah. Okay. So, what is that? It's basically the brace where the front end slides onto this thing and latches down. Okay. Okay. All right, so we've got some exciting stuff coming up. Stay tuned. Tell them to stay tuned, Dad. Stay tuned.